Welcome to Answers in Jubilees, produced by The God Culture. This has been one of the most revealing series of any we have reviewed. Imagine Torah being restored before our eyes. But why do we call Jubilees the Torah calendar? Some have asked that question. Well, actually, we didn't. Uh, We showed you that is essentially how the temple priests viewed this book. It's their characterization, not ours. They call it the exact determination of how to keep Torah, essentially, especially in dates or the calendar. And now we enter that topic coming off of our last three videos from Answers in Second Esdras. Now we will take what we learned there and apply it to Jubilees and the calendar and restore the biblical Sabbath year of rest for our land as well as the Jubilee year. Frankly, we threw out the modern so-called Jewish calendar a while ago, as it is wrong in many ways. But Jubilees will tell us specifically why it is the wrong basis and very clearly used by a group who is ignorant of Torah and does not represent it. Says Messiah, if you believe him. Of course, that is. We're also going to prove out the year and find out what year we are in. Now, this should be no surprise from the final eagle head, which is taking its place on the world scene right now. Watch Second Esdras and read the book for more on that. How do we know this Jewish calendar is not scripture? Well, Tons of ways, actually, but let's begin with the basic foundation of the biblical calendar. Open your book of Jubilees to chapter 2, verse 8. This is the creation account and how one should be reading Genesis, in fact, as well. Oddly, many read the creation account there where it says, Yahuwah created the sun and called it day, right? And also, Yahuwah created the light and called it day. And he created during the day. (laughs) I mean, it's really not that hard. 12 hours of daylight. And how does that just escape scholar after scholar? It's amazing. And then they forget that when they read the end, it was evening and it was morning, the first day. We cover this in great detail in our Sabbath series. Go watch it. Don't try to debate that here. It is rather difficult when it then adds them and recaps that it was a day, including daylight, then evening, and then morning, or the dark hours before sunrise, even by definition of the Hebrew word, for that matter. And then somehow, with the waving of their hand, they say, Well, creation only happened evening and morning. Uh, whatever. Let's read. And on the fourth day, he created the sun. Now, the first, notice first. And it was daytime, not evening and morning, same as Genesis. A whole period left out of the creation account in interpretation only because it's there by most. And the moon and the stars. Yes, they serve a purpose but not the one we are told in ignorance, especially the moon, and we're going to get there. And set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon all the earth and to rule over the day and the night and divide the light from the darkness. Now, what divides the day? Not the moon. The sun is the measure. You'll see. Check this out. And Elohim appointed the sun, just the sun, nothing else, to be a great sign on the earth for days. Thus, don't use the moon to count days. That's the wrong calendar. And for Sabbaths or weeks, thus, don't use the moon for Sabbaths or weeks. Use the sun. And for months, So don't use 
the moon for months, especially. 29 and a half days fits no calendar, really. Even the lunar calendar has to be <laughs> adjusted to try to make it work because it's fraught. And for feasts. Now, don't use the moon for feasts. Ooh, ooh. Is that right? Oh, that's absolutely right. Though there are a couple that are evening events, but you can't ignore that in order to get to that date, you can't get there by the moon. You can't do it. One must use the sun in order to even measure the days, months, weeks, years. So that is Yahuwah's measure. That's what he says, and that's what Moses wrote, and for years. Okay, so don't use the moon for years either. Use the sun. And for Sabbaths of years, can it be more specific? Every seventh year, the year of rest for the land, still using the sun, not the moon. And for Jubilees, now that's seven Sabbath years, essentially. And the celebration is the next year, the 50th. But Jubilees, the Torah calendar, counts in seven sevens, or 49s of years for a Jubilee, which is accurate. Now, we'll cover this and leave a spreadsheet for you uh, in the next video. Note, these dates are pretty good, but we cannot claim there is no margin of error. We're not doing that. We're just trying to get this stuff straight as much as we can, as far as we can. So, we are open to real suggestions, true suggestions. You can email us at thegodculture at gmail.com. And for all seasons of the year. Hmm. So that's all four seasons. They cannot be calculated on a lunar calendar properly because what does Jubilee say? The sun is the measure. That is what this is saying. Now you'll see why. In other words, don't ever use the moon for the calendar from days all the way to jubilees, including seasons. But wait, doesn't the moon drive the seasons? Well, let's see what NASA says, and then we'll use logic, which they don't typically do. But I've been surprised at how many comments have come through that people do not know this. Let's look at NASA. What causes the seasons? The moon? Nope. Earth's tilted axis causes the seasons. Throughout the year, different parts of Earth receive the sun's most direct rays. So when the North Pole tilts toward the sun, it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere. And when the South Pole tilts toward the sun, it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Now imagine, did they even have to make up a tilt in order to justify their paradigm? Hmm. Do your own research on that. I know. But that's NASA. Don't nobody trust anything from NASA, yo. Yeah, we get that all the time. And we agree. Certainly a valid point, as we should all test all things, all things, including what comes from your pastor, from seminaries, certainly from the Pope, who was a liar, and every Pharisee on earth. Yeah, absolutely, we should test. And a lot of scientists are Kabbalist in general. Now, especially when we were warned that we live in this age in a strong delusion, which Yahuwah is allowing. So, and we sure do, folks. Now, let's go to a more credible source, a more practical source, then. How about the Farmer's Almanac? And just about every result you get on, especially the first page of Google, go look it up. They all say the same. The sun is the measure of seasons, not the moon. The Bible never sets the moon as that measure either, and some confuse the word moon and the word month. you got to look that up each time it's used. Uh, they're two different Hebrew words, yet they have confused that all throughout Scripture, uh, really in fraud many times. The seasons 
would come in every 31 days, every quarter, and not 29.5 days, which throws the whole annual calendar off, and Jubilees will warn us not to follow the moon, because it's just plain wrong. No wonder it needed to be censored. It's called fraud, and that's the length they have to go to to install their fraud calendar. No worries. They are caught again. Well, it may seem that the seasons are caused by the Earth's changing distance from the sun. Wave your hand now. It's magic. It's really due to the tilt of the Earth's axis. This tilt, a 23-degree slant, enables the sun to appear above the horizon for different lengths of time at different seasons. The tilt determines whether the sun's rays strike at a low angle or more directly. Now, we aren't going to go any deeper on this, because really, this is what we needed. Uh, What causes the seasons? The sun or the moon? It's the sun, period. Reading a little further, check the sunrises. Ever notice the change in where the sun rises throughout the year, or seasons? Yep, defined by the sun, not the moon. This can also be attributed to this tilt. During the winter, the sun will rise in the southeast. As spring gets closer, the sunrise will move to the north. On the first day of the spring, the sun rises directly in the east. During the spring, the sunrise continues to move north and rises in the northeast by the first day of summer, and so on and so on. So, what is the measure? According to Science and the Farmer's Almanac, the sun is the measure for seasons not the moon. Now why? And in what measures do we use the sun or the moon? Well, this detail found in the Torah calendar of Jubilees. It's there in Genesis as well, many times. Just many are overlooking it or just not really reading it, as we cover in our Sabbath series, parts 6a through g. Check those out. We go into great detail we're not going to go into in these videos. Turn to Jubilees 636. Jubilees warns where we will go wrong with the calendar, and that is following the moon in error. That's what it says. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. Yep, that's accurate science from Jubilees. As the moon cycle is 29.5 days for a total of 354 days in the year, or 10 days too soon, exactly on the year. So it's off on seasons, wrong measure for pretty much everything regarding the calendar uh, in its regular cycles. It's off on the year. It's the wrong measure. We need the sun here. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day, and they will confound all the days. Wow! I mean, we are there, folks. Jubilees nailed it. The holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. This passage is literally saying the lunar calendar of the modern Pharisees, they call the Hebrew calendar, is not Yahuwah's. That's because it's from Babylon. Did Jubilees just predict the same as Daniel, that the beast or antichrist or anti-messiah, whatever you want to call him, uh, system will change times and laws? Well, it indeed is saying the same thing, isn't it? Turn it around. Want to find the beast system? Follow the ones who change the Bible and the Bible calendar. Pretty simple. 
Not rocket science, though even NASA can't quite figure it out. Here's what Jubilees tells us exactly. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and Jubilees. Okay, got that earlier in this passage. It says they will go wrong on the day and the year. Then, now, it rebukes the use of the moon as error in determining the feasts, then months, Sabbaths, weeks, again feasts, and jubilees. And before we saw, also, seasons are driven by the sun as the measure, not the moon. The sun, moon, and stars have a purpose indeed. Yes, for signs and seasons, but notice the sun is there in that passage too. It is the great sign appointed by Yahuwah to keep time. That is its purpose. It is what drives the calendar. He created during what he called day first, then it was evening, and then it was the dark hours of the morning for a total of one full day. It has to be because the seventh day is defined as the Sabbath day, which is a 24-hour day period in Scripture. There is no debate on this. We either follow Torah on this or we go against it and err. The Jews at the highest levels, not the average Jew who knows nothing of this and is deceived as you and I, migrate to err in everything they possibly can, as their true intent is to profane. It doesn't make sense to most of us because we don't understand wanting to commit profanity in all things in our lives. Because most of us don't do that. We don't operate in such a way. But they do. Messiah called them out in rebuke many, many times. And yet, we are supposed to ignore that and jubilees and place them above Torah, which they don't even know, and Yahuwah, whom they don't even know, nor even use his name. Pretty bad when you don't even know nor use the name of your God and then replace it with Lord or Baal in Hebrew and Hashem or Ashima, the false god of the Samaritan replacements. Ugh, yeah, doesn't look too good for them. They are exposed. We were warned mankind, even Israel, will screw up the calendar after Moses. Verse 38, For this reason I command and testify to thee, that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death, after Moses, thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. Boom! There it is. How long is the biblical year? 364 days Done. That's according to Torah. The lunar Ashkenazi Babylonian year is 354 days, the lunar year, typically, with multiple modifications needed to correct the calendar certain years, which already tells you their calendar is wrong. They even add an entire month some years to try to correct it. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons. Yep, even those are wrong. And seasons, and Sabbaths, weeks, and festivals. And they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. Remember, the biblical diet says not to eat blood, but to cook it, nothing raw. And that is what this refers to. We aren't covering clean versus unclean foods here, so don't even try illiterate trolls and bloggers, you will be deleted for bringing it up to attempt agitation to so-called poke holes, because we're not even covering that here. Our channel, our rules. Some say, well, maybe the Pharisees had the right calendar back in Messiah's day. No, they never did. They have always used a lunar Babylonian calendar. 
How do we know? Well, they don't use Torah except to defile it, turning Torah against Torah. That's Messiah's words in Mark 7, 9, where we also see him saying that they render the word of none effect. Pretty serious charge and still true today. Here's what the temple priest wrote of Jubilees as Torah and how the Pharisees ignored it even then as well as the biblical calendar because it is the biblical calendar. This is the Damascus document dated at least 50 AD. We source this in the book. It's by Giza Verms from his publishing. For Yahuwah made a covenant with you and all Israel. Therefore, a man shall bind himself by oath to return to the law of Moses. Well, in what way? Well, that would include the calendar. Understand that. That is part of his whole structure, and it matters immensely. For in it, all things are strictly defined. Now, where do we find that? Well, Torah, right? I mean, the law. If it defines the law, it's Torah. Exactly. But they don't lead us to Genesis. Nope, not Exodus. No. As for the exact determination of their times, the Torah calendar, to which Israel turns a blind eye, Israel, the Pharisees, were not keeping it, nor using Jubilees, nor its calendar. Behold, it is strictly defined in the book of the divisions of the times into their jubilees and weeks. Now, that's the full title for the book of Jubilees, which is a shortened title. One of many, which is another way they try to confuse us. We find this and prove out the death and resurrection of Yahusha in our Sabbath series. Watch it. Where we find it is glaring. Glaringly obvious that Joseph of Arimathea is using a different calendar from the Marys, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Messiah. They rest still as Sabbath continues on while he buys linens at the same time. They're resting. He's buying. Huh? And then he buries Messiah before his Pharisee Sabbath begins at sundown because he had that calendar back then. He was a good man and he was saved, but steeped as a Pharisee in their calendar and training. Now we cover that in full in our Sabbath series parts 6a through c with a chart even. Go there and watch. Try to debate without watching here and you will be muted. Our channel, our rules. Now, that's exactly what the Qumran temple priests are talking about when they say Israel turned a blind eye. Who was in charge of the temple and worship system of Israel at that point? Well, not the temple priests. They were exiled from the temple. The Pharisees and Sanhedrin. They were installed by the Hasmoneans, in fact. All the same Samaritans, not Hebrews. They ignored the Torah calendar of Jubilees specifically in terms of times. It's right there. 2,000-year-old writing there, folks. Right there. Now, this faction of Pharisees has always been an abomination from its root as the synagogue of Satan, who even say they are Yahudim and are not but do lie. Now, that's Messiah Again, calling them out in Revelation 2.9 and 3.9. Let's go to the last chapter of Jubilees, chapter 50, verse 2. You will notice Jubilees begins with the Sabbath and the calendar and ends with it as well. Yes, it is important to Yahuwah. And Israel and the Pharisees turned a blind eye toward it then and now. They continue to. The same practices. Yeah, been leavened quite a bit. Yes, they change. Yes, they morph. They evolve, but not in a good way. The church marginalizes it and operates in willing ignorance. They know nothing of it. There's very rarely a pastor that knows anything about the Bible calendar, and we were there at one time ourselves. 
And I told thee of the Sabbaths of the land on Mount Sinai. This is Yahuwah speaking. This is when the land is to rest every seventh year, but Israel will realize this and get a date here. And I told thee of the jubilee years in the Sabbaths of years. Sabbath years every seven years and jubilees every seven sevens or 49 years with the celebration following in the 50th year for the jubilee. The counting, though, is 49s, not 50s. The 50th year ends up the first year of the next jubilee. You don't, you don't add that into there. Understand that. Uh, and we account for that in the spreadsheet we're going to release next video. You are already counting in the next jubilee then, and one must account for this. With the next video, we'll break that down and offer the spreadsheet for clarity, uh, which you'll find in the description box. But the year thereof, have I not told thee, till ye enter the land which ye are to possess? Does that mean that Yahuwah never told anyone? No, that would be false. If you read all the jubilees, you can see that um, the Sabbath years and the jubilees were kept prior to that. But what does Yahuwah mean? The year they enter the promised land is the Sabbath year. And you will see this is basically the counting. And we'll see in the next video. That next year is the Jubilee year back to back. And that proves out. That is why Israel will know as soon as they enter because they will observe the Sabbath year resting the land the first year and the Jubilee year celebration over a two-year period because they're back-to-back -back when the Jubilee occurs. In the next video, we will count this using Daniel's math of the 2300 days we already calculated and applying the 7,000-year prophecy of Ezra and Enoch. Yahuwah's calendar and timing are perfect. Verse 3, And the land also will keep its Sabbaths while they dwell upon it and they will know the jubilee year. Now, is that important to Yahuwah? That will be the main reason they get kicked out. They get exiled from the land because they would not keep its Sabbaths. So now, they will enter the land and celebrate the Sabbath year, resting the land and the jubilee year next, right after it. Now, in the next video, we will count this out in detail, still using Jubilees, but applying what we found in our uh, two Daniel's 2300 Days videos and how much time is left, parts 9 through 11 of Answers in Second Ezra. Check those out. If you have not watched them, uh, we would encourage you to do so before entering this next answer in Jubilees because you will need that foundation. We're not going to recreate those videos, though we'll do a little brief. It's time, as best we can, to restore the biblical calendar. We will find this seventh year Sabbath and the Jubilee next. We will calculate the actual Hebrew year in which the Pharisees aren't even close they are over a thousand years off. Pretty sad. They have even changed scripture to try to force their monstrosity of a calendar, which is the calendar of, well, Isis, the moon goddess of Babylon, their god, Hashem, or Ashima, or Lord Baal. Same word in Hebrew. They do not know Yahuwah. They do not know his Torah, nor his ways, and they have turned a blind eye to it since the beginning. And that was 50 A.D., folks. 50. Even censoring this awesome book of Jubilees. We are not going to take a week between videos this time, as the next is a continuation. So it will follow pretty close to this one. Besides, we can't hold this back any longer. We want you to know. It's time to get this out there and restore His ways for all of us. We hope this episode has brought at least the beginning of clarity with more answers in Jubilees, the Torah calendar. Thank Yahuwah we have it. Yah bless. 
to everyone. The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilees also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis in Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full text for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes, in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288-page quality paperback has a high-resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook, or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area.
We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.